This video is a 360 degree documentation of the project Invisible Forces, which usually takes place in a virtual reality. You will see and hear all the works of the exhibition while you listen to an audio guide. Use your mouse to look around to the sides as well as up and down. Hello visitor, welcome to the Academy of Fine Arts in Helsinki. You are one of the first to see it, as this building has not yet been built. This show is special. It is the very first one to be held in the new building of Kuva, the UniArts Academy of Fine Arts. You will experience works of nine artists connected to our university. They are taking different, sometimes unusual forms. So be observant. I am Ursula and I will be your guide. I will tell you something about every artwork that you will encounter. You can use the pad to jump between the works or explore the building by yourself, using all the possibilities in the virtual reality. Where shall we go first? You are now approaching Susanna Altia's work. The artist manipulated a piece of analog film she soaked it in water, like this. She extracted the film's layers and she scratched them with a knife. It sounded like this. Originally it was more like a collage, but now, in here, it has taken this sculpture-like form. We can't see the original images of the film anymore. But we don't need to see them to know that they still exist, but in another, new shape. How would you call what Susanna Audio has created? Is it a filmo collage in motion? Is it a spatial decomposition of a film? Trees have a very rich spiritual symbolism. There is the tree of life in various cultures and civilizations. The tree is an essential part in the Garden of Eden, where we also find the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The artist Nils Titus Östbrandt has built a giant tree of consciousness in the middle of the academy for us to climb. Next to the tree, we find two holes of life, as if we could cross over to the other side of life just by going underground. The tree wants us to question the meaning of our lives. Why do we worry then, if life might be eternal? Can techno produced realities make us consider other parallel realities? Or make us reflect on our existence as humans and the way we are to each other? 
Can a virtual simulation be a tool to approach the afterlife world? Why should spirituality be detached from our constructed realities? entering a screening room. Isn't that funny? You are already in a digital reality. It is constantly screened right in front of your eyes. But still, you are about to watch a video on a traditional 2D screen. Can you imagine any other ways of presenting a video in virtual reality than using the technology we would use in real life. In a moment, you will watch a fictional short movie by Cesar Kachi. You will see characters being followed by a camera, but the characters are unaware that they are being filmed. Like this. The atmosphere is like in a suspense movie, and in a similar way, the white dawn reveals dark secrets of people that don't seem to stand out. But can we really believe in this voice and the camera that is secretly following people? What do you think? Who is standing behind the camera? Hey, have you walked already through the staircase? It's worth trying. You can listen to a sound art piece there. Johanna Sulalampi is interested in the relation between humans and computers. When working together, a kind of shared awareness is created between the human and the machine. Just think about how people use technology to store their memories, because the computers keep them intact, unlike our own insufficient brain. Humans are very flexible. A computer, once programmed, can't be persuaded to change its way of working. So are we becoming more like computers in order to collaborate with them? Do you feel you have a bond with devices that you use every day? Do you understand them? Which parts of this artwork are about the human? And which parts about computers? These photos are described as a participatory installation. Why do you think that is? Would there be any way to take part? Maybe they are hiding some kind of secret.
This is a room that Jana Kahkonen built in her studio. The shelves are meant to carry the weight of humans, so, instead of holding objects, the shelves can be climbed on. You should try it. I wonder why the image is on the floor. It is a little unusual, don't you think? And it gives us a very unique perspective. It looks like the person in the picture doesn't have to oppose gravity. There are no safety regulations. Do you feel safe where you are? Here you see a work that can't be exhibited in its original shape outside a virtual reality. This is No Island, A Man, made by Eli Lehto. The title refers to the saying that no man is an island, but the word order has been changed and the logical structure broken. The effect is similar to the process of creating glitch art, which inspired the work. Glitch art uses errors in digital data to create its aesthetics. There are five layers consisting of broken pictures that were randomly picked from search engines. They are merging together and creating different backgrounds for a simplified human figure. The figure is always in the front. Just like in the most popular motive in the long history of art, figure and background, figure and background, figure and background. Go closer so that you can see each layer well. Are they separate images? or parts of a whole? Are they islands? Or do they form a landscape? Have you noticed flickering lights in this building? This, among other disturbances, is also an artwork. Changing bulbs, clearing up broken glass, or repairing a leaking roof would be usual everyday things. But in a virtual space, these commonplace issues need to be planned carefully. Isn't that absurd? A virtual exhibition space doesn't need maintenance. In those terms, it is perfect and pristine. 
But if the server breaks down, if this reality gets hacked, it may stop functioning completely. Is creating small malfunctions in a digital environment making the space more authentic, more similar to real galleries? Or does it only feel more abstract and fake? Hey, visitor, look at this enormous branch. It is one of Sarah Blosseville's virtual sculptures. There are several of them around the academy. Have you spotted any yet? They are part of her project AFK as away from keyboard. The artist is interested in the process of scanning the world. Much of our surroundings already have a virtual copy online and could easily be reproduced in 3D print. She has scanned various objects from nature. Here they seem a bit clumsy, perhaps. Their texture is not corresponding with the real version. Is it even possible to recreate nature? Do we need nature in virtual reality? <laughs> <laughs> 